All right, so I created an image space. So if you're in Photoshop and you're working around your sketch, I grew extra space so that everyone should have, if they look at image, image size, 30 by 40 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. And your sketch is pretty big in there with a chunky frame around it where we can arrange stuff. So think of this as the center of the factory floor where we have the blueprints scaled to the right size for our, for our creature. Other parts of the factory floor are we're going to assemble the different parts and then we'll weld them all together just like building a car on an assembly line. So I brought in the cranium for the head. Now I'm going to bring in, I'll make these a little bit bigger so you can see them in the video. I'm going to bring in some of these other features. Now, I, I tend to get more reference than I need. And I was thinking I wanted to use this chameleon eye so I can bring that in. But I don't need to keep that whole head because it's really only this eye that I wanted to keep. Maybe that eye, maybe this little ridge. This is a rough cutout, like tearing from a magazine, right? And then I hit Command J. What that does is it makes a duplicate of what I lassoed onto a new layer. Then I can delete the smart object, and then it's already rasterized, so I can transform with Command T, Option Command T if you're using Photo P, and I can immediately start rough placing these features together. So remember, this is my cranium. So I'm going to warp it and fit it to my cranium. So that means that the eye kind of sinks back like that along that same ridge. That's rough cutting out. Okay, at this point, I have more than one layer, and I haven't saved it yet. You can always just check your title if you haven't saved it. So I go to File, Save As. We always save to our computer. Do not save to cloud documents. Save first to your computer and maybe never save to cloud documents because it's not all that reliable. All right, so this, I always start my posts. Remember, you can get fired for not doing this from jobs with your name because art directors have the hard job of organizing everyone's work and finding it for different publication jobs and different marketing campaigns. So they need you to title your work. Don't, you don't turn in term papers without your name on them. Don't save a digital file without your name on it. So I use my name and then I use a description. So this is assignment two and I am doing, I'll just call it a beaked gerbil. Save it as a PSD file. I always think it's safest to save it right to the desktop and then organize it into your folder later. So I hit function F11 and I see it, it's right here on the desktop. And I mark it as yellow because I'm working on it. Even though my desktop's getting kind of full. All right, next, what can I bring in for the head? Well, I have that chameleon eye, but I actually liked this goldfish eye better for the actual eye part. So I'm gonna do the same thing there, lasso, just, roughly around what I want to use. Sometimes the guides can get in the way because your lasso will stick to them. So I can turn those off with command, command semicolon. Then I'm going to command J, duplicate that lassoed selection from the smart object, delete the smart object. And then I can command T or option command T in photo P to free transform that I And I can line it up. I can rotate it. Ooh, eyes are fun. And I'm not trying to get this super clean and detailed. I'm going to use distort to kind of make it fit onto the anatomy. And now I've got three rough layers on the head, right? And I haven't color corrected them, and I haven't blended them and I haven't cut them out cleanly. They're just roughly stacked, but sized correctly. And it gives me that, that 
really big wonky eye and a nice transition into some sort of beak or bill. And this was actually the best one I found in a short search. It's a type of vulture. It's colorful. It's interesting. The feathers look kind of furry around it. So I'm going to get a lot of overlap. I'm not going to try to cut it out cleanly yet. And then duplicate Command J. Subtract the smart object. Notice, unlike the landscape, I'm not keeping the smart objects because I can always just get them again from my file. Now I'm going to move that underneath and then use Command T or Option Command T if you're using Photo P. And I can use Distort because it's at the right angle, but it's just not the right proportion. And get that, that beak sitting correctly. Remember, this, these organic materials are pretty helpful for this. But it's good to know that action line, that direction line, not action line, the direction line. So you know you're, you're matching the same angle. So if we strip this down, this head is now made up of four different layers. And it hasn't been oiled and cleaned and color corrected and sanded down yet. And I'm missing ears. So that whole cranium is really getting covered by all of these components, but that cranium tells me how to get them all at the right angle. Now this one, I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm going to rotate it and I can rough cut out just those ears. And because of the great resources of PhotoP, not of PhotoP, of Pixabay, all of these references are a lot larger than what I need. They take up a lot of memory, though, because of that. So I immediately uh, duplicate them, rasterize them, and then I can resize them with free transform. rotate them. I said I could cheat this angle and I'll show you why and how. So I'm going to move this now behind everything else. And now to get those ears to go on top, uh, I am going to do a, a quick cleanup job just on the back of this gerbil's head because I need the ears to kind of come from behind it just so I can see how to size them. So I'm going to use the magic wand I'm going to have contiguous checked. I'm using a tolerance of just 12, which is lower than the default tolerance in Photoshop, which is 32. I click on it, and how can I clean that up? I can use Select and Mask, remember? And it will remember my settings. I have a feather setting of 2.9 pixels. I increased it and I have it set to remember my settings. So if that looks okay, then I can hit delete. And when I do that, it will bite away at that halo. I don't need it to be perfectly clean, but I want it not to be distracting so I can do these other ears. Then I can do the same thing with this around it. and add to that with my lasso. I'm holding down shift. I'm just cleaning up all that extra space around the back of the cranium's source. Then I go back to the magic wand and I'll add all this empty space so I can do select and mask again. This is what takes the processing power of Photoshop. The select and mask is refine edge in PhotoP and it takes a lot of processing. And then I just delete. Delete, 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 delete. All right. So now I can go to those ears, and now I can see when I transform them how I can line them up with the other ears. And one thing, I'm going to distort and pinch these ones in the back. This is how you cheat it at an angle because they're smaller and further away than the ear at the front. Then I can take the whole thing, scale it, and fit it in. All right, 
So you kind of see how that works. And then while I'm at it, because this reference was nice and easy, I'm going to select all that background that I want to trim away. And I'm just going to rough cut it by using my magic wand with contiguous and select and mask. Say OK. And then just delete, 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 delete. delete. But obviously there'll be more cleanup to do. But before I do final cleanup, what I want to do is fix all the colors. But for now, that's my head design. And I'll show you how do I start doing a rough blend, even though it'd be better to fix the colors first. So I'm just going to do that on the cranium, this guy. And I'm just going to go to image adjustment. We're going to use the same ones, levels first. We did this a lot with our landscape project. I'm going to brighten up the midtones first. I think darken up the contrast a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Then I go to color balance. This makes the biggest difference. And I'm going to add more red into it because I like that kind of orangey color of my inspiration and also of the dog ears that I'm using. A little bit of yellow. Maybe a little bit of green. Play with the highlights, same thing. A little bit more red. A little bit of magenta. No, a little less magenta. A little bit of blue. Now it's matching pretty well. And then go to shadows. And I'll do the opposite. Go more towards the blues. And the cyans. Okay, good. So now that I've matched that color, I could go to hue saturation my last tool in the direct adjustments, and just shift the hue a little bit, see if that helps, it just a tiny bit, and then I can play with the intensity of that color. I'm just gonna take it up just a tiny bit. Now, I do that same technique we learned last class for blending organic textures into organic textures, like the sky or grass, but this time I'm blending fur into fur. So what do I use? I use an eraser at 100% opacity with a 0% hardness edge, fairly large. And I just obliterate that hard edge that's separating the two. So I'm erasing away from that cranium layer. Yeah, and I actually like that little shadow there. And then once I got rid of that hard edge, I can take the opacity down and then blend it a little bit more smoothly, depending on how much overlap I have. So I think that's about going to do it. Now I can do it on the other side. First 100%. Going to make the brush a little bit smaller because there's less room over here. And I obliterate the hard edge. That's why you have to be at 100%. And now, you can see how those two blend together. So this is now what I have. <laughs> it's kind of a gerbil with different kind of ears. Right. But you want a rough place and rough cut everything first so you know where the overlaps go. Cool. All right, next. Oh, then I might decide I want to take this layer and warp it a little bit differently to help cover some of that transition. scale it a little bit differently. And then, since I've been using my magic wand, I can get rid of this really bright color. 